given yeah, in no in time. Yeah, in some I seconds. Think. Yeah. So, well, I think the game on table one will have a personal arbiter from now on after what has happened mm -hmm. in, in the first round. So I could see my good friend Omar, Omar Salama from Iceland being around this game. Mm -hmm. uh, right, one, we have one more first time. Moves. E4, and once again, Magnus goes for this provocative systems, uh, system with an early knight on c6. Forcing white, okay, not forcing, but inviting white to play d5, which was played, and knight goes back to b8. Basically, giving white two tempi, right? Yeah, so, knight so to it's take, like, knight b8, and then you have to come again with knight to develop your pieces. Yeah, but, yeah just imagine this position, the pawn, white's pawn could have been on d2. So, guess what? We don't recommend to try this at home. It's, it's uh, well, <laughs> not exactly... A correct opening, even though, even though Magnus uh, <laughs> seemingly does very well with that. Uh, okay, so but he likes this setup: bishop on g7, yeah, which is very D6, open, C6, and yeah. then c6, a6, b5. No, of course it has its logic. It's not like a, you know something really weird. It's not Richard Rappert's opening in <laughs> round one of Rapping when where we were really wondering if it's not a transmission mistake b5 is very well very aggressive move so white is offered to capture on c6 i wish he has played a3 and you know what i mean when your opponent goes for moves such as b5 for provocations you really have to you know you really have to accept the challenge you really have to try to punish your opponent yeah. because if you react with moves like a3 i don't claim that it's a bad move but the feeling is like you your give, opponent gets what he wants yeah you give something away that's exactly what i wanted to say yeah it's like okay you accept ah oh, no no I, I want to be on the safe side and then in a couple of moves the advantage has gone in another couple of moves it's already your opponent who has more comfortable position mm -hmm. On the other hand, I mean, if you put everything in the center like Vishy Anand did, I don't really see any chance for you to be worse. Well, actually what he does now, takes on c6 and goes e5, it looks like he's, I mean, his position is very nice. d5, knight takes. Knight takes, and then there is also a possibility to swap the queens. Bishop takes e5, I guess. Magnus might want to just, you know, take on d2. Take on d2, play rook fd8. Play rook fd8. Uh, about well, Vichy, he has not lost any single games. He he made uh, draws. He made only two draws. I mean, he, he dropped one point, essentially. So that's... Uh, I think two. More or less. Ah, no, two. Yeah, ah, yeah exactly. He no, we were four, talking about four leaders. Ah, so, so four draws for Vichy mm -hmm. out of seven rounds. So he's very solid. What can we say? Okay, rook d1, rook to c8. It's more of a Sicilian endgame now, now, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine some Scheveningen or, or maybe a dragon Sicilian where yeah. black managed to play d5. Knight a2, well... Uh, what has this majority on the king side, but yet they are stopped? c3, knight to b4. Yeah, that's something, something white is trying to achieve. And despite uh, black's dark square bishop being, well, technically better than its uh, white's counterpart, I think uh, black should probably settle to swap the bishops. I mean, so somehow move the, well, moving the knight outright here, I'm considering, like going to e4, it's not that good, right? Because... And e4 it will be under bishop f3 pin. Yeah, and, and also, I mean, just taking and giving uh, giving white access to d7 square, that's what I don't like, so that white will play rook d7. Well, take on g7, play rook d7. So, what what are the options? I mean, king f8 is a typical move for, for an endgame. Now, Magnus at some point had a considerable advantage on a clock, but now he tends to spend quite some time here, so it's almost equal. Or oh, one and a half minutes. Well, one and a half minutes for each. Okay, let's see what he comes up with. There is still a move <laughs> like knight d5, which you probably don't like because of a pin, right? Yeah, bishop take on g7 and then bishop f3. Bishop f3, which e6, can be e6. e6, knight to b4, Before. and then even a5 for black. I, th I think that's kind of a straightforward way to make a draw if, if white, of course, plays bishop f3. 
I mean, some rook end game tempo uh, pawn down. Well, he goes knight, knight eight. eight. After well, he spends a lot of time. Maybe he, he wants to come knight d six. Uh, yes, but no. But she goes. Bishop Bishop goes g three uh, back, and now once again, rook d seven is an idea. Mm -hmm. So black has to be has to be a little careful here. Knight back to f six. Knight back to f6. So one more time in this game, Magnus gives oh, his opponent to Tempe. Bishop e5. Bishop e5. Bishop e doesn't mind to repeat the position. At <laughs> least once. Oh, and then knight e4 94. is played. Knight e4 is played. So Magnus decides to play on. I'm um, just trying to understand what is going to happen in case of takes, takes rook d7. Hmm. I don't really see it. So the bishop will be attacked and so will be the e7 pawn. Rook d7. Why he was insisting so much on, on this knight c5? Knight comes. Oh, well, and the, if maybe. rook takes, he wants to play rook d8. Yeah, king f6 first to drive the rook away and then rook d8. Huh, interesting. So he definitely is up to, to have some compensation. He's definitely... Up to have some compensation, he wants Rook to play. Rook D2 is coming Rook D2, right now, Knight yeah. A4, it's Rook also D2. possible. But I don't really believe that white can be worse here. Uh, well, who knows? Look at this, the other look this Knight on A2 is out of the play and has no, no nice then. place to come. Before B4. and then? Knight B4. Or, oh well, C4, C4 is a possible move as well. So now Rook D2. And white C4. apparently is planning to take on b5 in this case. I don't what see happens uh, after... Yeah, pawn takes. Then it's bishop takes? dangerous to take with the bishop, right? Check and yeah, check, you will have to play bishop f1. Maybe it's fine, you know. Yeah, bishop decides for that one. Let's see how fine it is. But, but there's bishop, bishop uh, d5. d5. No, it's no, not. Bishop knight, d5 and knight knight you are running on the knight c3. Well, uh, also the time becomes a factor because Wishy is down to 16 seconds only. Magnus is on half a minute. Also, well, serious time deficit, I have to say. Mm, so far, uh, don't see. While we're looking to this board, um, there we have results on the second board. The leaders, Vashie, Karyakin, they made draw. They made the draw, yeah. Logical. So, rook d2, rook to e2. Magnus is still a pawn down, so the trade of the rooks is not in his favor. He goes back to d1, knight to c3, rook to c1. Now it's a time to unpin this bishop. Ah, well, but it's not that easy, right? F3, F3 played by Vashie Anand. So, what Magnus is supposed to do? I guess it's a5, yeah. Well, Vashie on seconds, like... Well, isn't he Three. too slow? Isn't he too slow? Four. I'm afraid he's going to lose this one. I mean, simply because of being too slow. The pawn is no, done. no, he managed to increase the speed. But now 91, 91, 94, or 93. The, the knight is actually trapped. The knight is actually trapped on e1. Don't quite understand what goes on here. H4. If King so H4 if the king takes... There's a uh, king g4. Uh, there was a rook e3, and he was about to take it. King g5, rook. Ah oh no, there is no rook e3, but there is. Uh, well, no mate, no nothing. Now rook c7 is going to happen. I mean, j just look at this position. That's it's crazy. incredible what go goes on here. A4, a calm <laughs> move with one second on the clock. Knight g2 takes, king takes h4, and now the white king is stalemated. So white rook can become a desperado, like rook c7, you know, you know, always checks. And I think they've agreed a draw? Did they? Yeah. yeah. As both smiling, laughing and everything, I think it I was... I think they are laughing about taking an h4. Uh, he I was just know. about to take h4 pawn. Ah, you mean when, when h4 was played, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, well, <laughs> Rishi was about to blunder, yeah, that's... That was a crazy game, what can I say? So, a draw for Vishy and Magnus, a draw as well for the actual leaders, Vashiela Graf and Karyakin. That's Could very unusual smile of Carlson yeah. after the game. Could you please check the other results? It's like uh, board three, board four, just to see if the leaders will be get, uh, caught up. Meanwhile, we are shown...
the ladies section, board one, where it's still a fight between Gunina and Zagnidze. Uh, that's the position. Ah, well, Zagnidze is completely winning. I think he has just won. Yeah, the game is finished. So Nana Zagnidze wins to become a sole leader after eight rounds. Yeah, I so far I don't have any results. I can't see any. No results, results in the men's mm -hmm. section, right? So we'll check board two.